Hi, I'm Ian and welcome back to Astro Time Traveller. Last night was the first clear night we've had in Surrey here in the UK for some 20 plus days and it was clear all night which was really good and it enabled me to take a number of uh, different targets but in particular I was after the James Webb Space Telescope and I managed to get 28 images of it each of four minutes long. So in this video I'm going to show you the result of that and you can see the telescope actually moving through uh, the field of view which given it's over 900,000 kilometers from Earth and it's only about 60 feet by 40 feet in diameter I think that's pretty amazing to use a, an amateur uh, piece of telescope here I'm using the uh, Skywatcher uh, Esprit 120 to actually capture that uh, it's probably the furthest man-made object that I've ever been able to uh, capture in my telescope at such a long long range so stay tuned see how it came out and I'll give you a little bit of background about how I took it and some of the other YouTubes that I watched to to get how to um, get the exact coordinates and uh, how I took the image and uh, hopefully it's a bit of fun so uh, stay tuned and uh, see you soon So here is the James Webb uh, Space Telescope. It's not fully deployed yet, but the sun shield is now fully tensioned. And it's about 60 feet by 40 feet, I think 21 meters by about 14 meters. And so seeing it from Earth is fantastic given it's so small. And I used Review Labs to tell me some of the stats. And I took this image on uh, the 4th of January, just gone uh, 11, uh, nine o'clock in the evening. And you can see at that stage, it was 923 thousand kilometers from Earth, so very, very far away, 2.4 times the distance of the, uh, from the uh, Moon to the Earth. And I got the coordinates using um, the Unistellar method, which um, Pat had shown on Hemley Backyard Astronomy. But Ray's astro astrophotography also shows you a different method to try and get the coordinates. And you can see here from Stellarium that the actual place of where I was taking the image on that particular night was just to the left of the Orion Nebula. So it's quite easy to take and it was up in the sky for a long period during the night. I took 28 exposures, but I probably could have taken more. Now here's a stacked image of the uh, frame that I took. And we'll see in a second that the actual place where the telescope is, is right in the center. And it's very hard to see. And even on this stacked image, you don't get to see the actual telescope moving through. But what I will show you is when I use a blink in PixInsight, you can see it. And as we zoom in, you can see we're getting closer and closer to the central point where I had it. And this little white line that I put in will basically show you the direction of travel that the uh, telescope was taking. Here I am now in PixInsight. I'm circling there where the telescope is in my image. And now I'm going to fast forward through the 28 frames to show you it moving through the field of view. And there you go. So there you can see all the stars staying static around it, but with each frame you can see it moving forward. Now I took uh, 240 seconds, four minute exposures for each of those, so it looks a little elongated, but that's uh, no bad thing because we really want to just show the direction of travel and showing it moving across the field of view. And I'm, as I said, amazed that just with a relatively small amateur telescope, we can see an object, a man-made object, um, over 900,000 kilometers from Earth. And clearly that's the furthest I've ever seen anything uh, man-made traveling through space. So I hope you've enjoyed this, a little bit of information about how I did it, and I'll leave you with a few more images of it uh, flying through the field of view.